Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another Dokkan battle video. So, in about 11 to 12 hours from now, the top legendary summon banner for the LR Kaoken Goku and LR Great 8 Vegeta will be dropping on Global for part 2 of the 7th anniversary celebration. So, in today's video, I want to quickly go over all the details that you guys need to know about this release to hopefully help you decide whether or not you want to spend your hard-earned Dragon Stones to try and pull these guys, or instead save those stones for something else in the future. So yeah, with that said, let's jump right into it, starting with the animations first, and popping over to the official Dokkan Twitter page. Let me just quickly pause the music. Okay, and I think we're starting with, yeah, the Goku first. So enjoy, guys. Even the lowest born can outdo the elite if they work hard enough. Alright, so there you go. Those are the animations for the LR Kaoken Goku. Um, they look extremely, extremely clean, especially that 18 key super, which I think is like on par with any of the animations from part one. Um, it just looks insane to me. But as a whole, I don't think it's quite on the same level as the uh, Dual Dokkan Fest LRs, which tends to be the case for every anniversary, right? It's like almost as if they spend most of the animation budget on the part one LRs and then the part two LRs don't like get shafted but just don't get as much love as the part one LRs did which I guess kind of makes sense part one is always the most hype right but with that said really really nice looking animations especially that 18k super in my opinion now moving on to the uh great ape Vegeta now here we go. Uh, let me just turn up the volume a little bit. Okay, and enjoy. You're about to learn the hard way that effort alone isn't enough to reach my level. So it's been a while since I've seen these animations, right, in full. Um, I think the last time was like, you know, sometime in like March or whatever, right? So um, I kind of forgot how 
awesome the Vegeta animations were. I mean, if I'm being honest, I think they put a little bit more time and effort into the Vegeta animations compared to the Goku. Um, it might just be a product of the source material, right? We also have the like Great Ape transformation and the Great Ape animation, so maybe that's like skewing my perception a bit, but if I were to like hit the two animations against each other, like as a whole, um, I would have to give the edge to the Vegeta, I think. Yeah, I think Vegeta is just slightly better, but of course, they both look great. Still not on par with the part one animations, but nothing to complain about, that's for sure. So moving on to the actual banner now, which um, I'm sure is the main reason you guys came to this video. And uh, you know, it's a top legendary summon banner, so you should really uh, control your expectations as far as like the featured units go, because there's no Dokkan Fest units on the banner, obviously that's for the Dokkan Fest banners. This is a legendary summon banner, which means that we got some featured LRs, which would be the Kaken Goku and the Great Ape Vegeta. And otherwise, we have a bunch of non Dokkan Fest Gokus and Vegetas. And that's not to say that we don't have some good units here, like the uh, Fizz Vegeta and the Tech Goku here. They're both quite solid with their Extreme Z Awakenings, especially on longer events where they're able to stack their attack and defense. Um, I think the AGL Goku and the STR Maja Vegeta here, they're not bad um, as nukers. Uh, I wouldn't really use them on like harder events because their defense is not the best, but uh, they can both put up some pretty big numbers offensively. The Goku is a really good healer, so they got their uses as well. Uh, this Fizz Goku, which is the Heart Virus Goku, um, is actually really powerful, especially paired up with the uh, Transforming Fizz Super Saiyan 2 Goku that transforms into Super Saiyan 3 Goku, and uh, I like him a lot. So like I said, man, we got some good featured units here outside of the LRs. But, you know, as always, these guys are general SSR pool units. They're available on every banner, and when you, you know, compare this banner to the uh, Part 1 Dual Dokkan Fest banners with seven featured Dokkan Fest LRs each, um, I mean, there's no comparison. There, there's no comparison. I mean, the Part 1 banners are like 10 out of 10. This one, uh, if I were to be generous, I would give like a... 6 out of 10, maybe, uh, 6.5, something something like that. So definitely a big disparity as far as value goes between this banner and the Part 1 banners. And um, yeah, I just don't think it's that good. Oh, uh, before I forget, there is the option to use the Rainbow Tickets, the Tons of Thanks Tickets, for um, this banner as well. So if you guys... Uh, want to spend those tickets here, you can go ahead and do so, and that can definitely save you some stones. But uh, keep in mind, you can also use the tickets for the Dual Dokkan Fest banners as well, and once again, in my opinion, much better value there. I would rather use my rainbow tickets on the Part 1 banners as opposed to this Part 2 banner. But that's just me. That's just me. Now let's jump over to the unit details. And uh, since we started with the Goku's animations first, we will start with his details as well. So his leader skill is All Out Struggle or Final Trump Card, Category Key plus 4, HP Attack and Defense plus 150%. Uh, 12 Key Super raises Attack and Defense for one turn and causes Mega Cost of Damage. And 18 Key Super massively raises Attack and Defense for one turn, which is a 100% boost and causes mega cost of damage to enemy while sacrificing 4%. That's 3. 4% HP, which is standard for a Kaioken unit. As you guys know, uh, basically all of the Kaioken Gokus in the game, as far as I can remember, have some kind of like HP sacrificing um, mechanic, right? And then his passive is, if there is an enemy whose name includes Vegeta, Kid, Junior, etc. excluded. At the start of character's attacking turn, activates the entrance animation once only, and key plus 3 and attack plus 70% for the rest of the battle. And then attack and defense plus 100%, key plus 7 for 7 turns from start of turn, plus an additional 
attack and defense plus 59% when performing a super attack, plus an additional attack plus 59% if it is an ultra super attack, randomly changes key spheres of a certain type, STR excluded, to STR key spheres, and then high chance of performing a critical hit. And his additional boosts are calculated separately, so uh, let's see here. Um, he gets a total boost of attack and defense plus 218% when performing a super attack, plus an additional attack boost of up to attack plus 336% if it is an ultra super attack. And then if you're facing a Vegeta, then you'll be getting attack plus 329.3% on a 12k super, and attack plus 488.6% um, for an ultra super attack or an 18k super. So, uh, long story short, this guy, it's extremely, extremely hard, guys. He does a stupid amount of damage. His defense is also really good after the super attack. He's not a good slot 1 unit, though, because, as you can see, he's only getting attack and defense plus 100%, um, you know, without supering. He needs to attack to get the additional 59% defense and also the massive... Um, defense boost on his 18k super or the uh, you know regular defense boost on his 12k super so yeah after the super he gets a really good amount of defense um, nothing insane but definitely a good defender he just needs to be in slot 2 or slot 3 and if he takes an attack before he gets to attack then he could definitely uh, hurt you a little bit on defense and there's also the fact that he does hurt you just in general on his 18k super. I mean, 4% HP is not crazy, but in, you know, harder events where you need every single, you know, bit of HP you can get, uh, this can definitely um, be your demise as well, I would say. Like, for example, uh, red zone where a lot of times I'm skating by with like, you know, 50k HP or whatever. If I have this going every other turn with the Kaken Goku, then I might not be able to make it, right? So that's also something to keep in mind if you plan to bring this guy um, on your team for a really hard event. So uh, yeah, he has some drawbacks for sure, but as a whole, I do think it's a very powerful unit. Um, I think at this point, with the release of some LRs like, uh, you know, the Zamasu or the... Uh, Golden Frieza, right, on JP, he's not quite in, like, the top 5 anymore, but he's still got to be, like, a top 10 LR in the game at this moment in time. So, yeah, very good. Um, not perfect, but definitely a really strong unit. Now, let's jump over to the Vegeta. Leader skill, Inhuman Deeds, or Giant 8 Power, Category Key plus 4. HP, Attack, and Defense plus 150%. 12 key Super, raises attack for one turn and causes colossal damage. And then 18 key super, mega cost of damage to all enemies. So this is an attack all super like STR Broly has or um, the AGL Majin Vegeta and so on and so forth, right? And his passive is if there is a enemy whose name includes Goku, Youth, Ginyu, Junior, etc. excluded at the start of character's attacking turn, activates the entrance animation once only and key plus 3 and attack plus 60%. For the rest of the battle and then key plus three and attack and defense plus 100 percent plus an additional attack and defense plus 60 percent when performing a super attack plus an additional defense plus 60 percent if it is an ultra super attack and then gains or sorry uh guards all attacks plus an additional key plus three and attack plus 30 percent within the same turn when guard is activated and just like the kaken goku uh his Additional boosts are calculated separately for a total attack and defense boost of 220%. And then if you're facing a Goku, then you get 316% attack and 394% attack when guard is activated. And finally, if you're performing an ultra super attack, then you get defense boost of up to 340%. And of course, on top of that, you're getting the guard, so... Um, this guy is, you know, compared to the Goku, a more defensive unit who can also put up some pretty decent numbers offensively. Um, I don't think he's quite as good as the Kaken Goku, in my opinion, but at the very least, he doesn't hurt you on the 
18k super, but uh, that comes at the expense of, uh, you know, a lot less attack and defense. I mean, this massively raising attack and defense is huge on the 18k super, and it allows the Goku to, once again, do a lot more damage and get a lot more defense too. But of course, Vegeta makes up for that with the guard of all attacks, which I think is very, very valuable. And uh, yeah, that is the Great Ape Vegeta. All right, so I just realized that I missed a bunch of info for both these units after I finished recording. So let's just quickly go back and uh, cover those as well, right? So for the Goku, he does have an active skill, as you guys saw in the animations, which greatly raises attack temporarily and causes ultimate damage while stunning the enemy for one turn. And this can be activated when HP is 59% or less once only. And his links are Kamehameha, Z Fighters, Over in a Flash, the Saiyan Lineage, Shocking Speed, Shadowing the Limit, and Legendary Power. And uh, for the Vegeta, his active skill is the transformation into a giant ape. And this can be activated when HP is 40% or less once only. And uh, for the giant ape transformation, it's like you know, most of the giant form transformations or rage modes, uh, you're invincible for one to two turns, and the 12k super causes destructive damage, the 18k super greatly raises attack temporarily and causes destructive damage, and then the passive is just key plus five to make it easier to get a super off uh, in the giant ape form, right? And finally, his links are Saiyan Warrior Race, Rail Lineage, over 9,000, Transform, Saiyan Roar, Shattering the Limit, and Legendary Power. And, uh, oh, they're both in a bunch of categories. Um, for Koku, it's Pure Saiyan's Full Power, Koku's Family, Kamehameha, Final Trump Card, All Out Struggle, Turtle School, Bond of Friendship, Accelerated Battle, uh, Battle of Fates, Saiyan Saga, and Bond of Parent and Child. And for the Vegeta, we have Giant Form, Pure Saiyan, Dragon Ball Seekers, Vegeta's Family, Terrifying Conquerors, Final Trump Card, and Human Deeds, Giant Ape Power, Space Traveling Warriors, Gifted Warriors, Planetary Destruction, Accelerated Battle, Battle of Fate, and finally, Saiyan Saga. So, two really good non Dokkan Fest Lars for this banner. Um, I think they're both worth having, that's for sure. But the question that uh, you guys all came here to get answered is whether they're good enough, whether the banner is good enough to justify summoning um, when we know that there's some other really good stuff around the corner. And in my opinion, the answer is no, because while these guys are, once again, both really good units, um, I can guarantee you that whatever we're getting next for the worldwide celebration, which is happening uh, in August, you know, at the end of August, um, will be much better, right? The Dual Dokkan Fest LRs for this year, uh, as with every year, are gonna be really, really powerful. And uh, I mean, it's gonna be really cool to be able to use the Kalkin Goku and the Great Ape Vegeta if you happen to pull them. But there's no question that they will be outclassed by the uh, upcoming Worldwide Celebration LRs. And most likely, they're going to be Dragon Ball Super, you know, superhero movie related units, maybe a new Gohan and a Piccolo or something to that effect. So I think as far as hype goes, those guys will also be a lot more hype. So I think the smart thing to do here, unless you're a massive, massive Saiyan Saga fan, you just have to have the Kakun Goku and the uh, Great Ape Vegeta, which I understand, right? For some people, it's just about like, which characters are the most exciting to you. And if these guys are really, really exciting to you, then by all means, go for it. But I think that if you wanna be uh, smart with your stones, if you wanna save them for the best available units and the best available value as far as banners go, then you gotta save those stones for the Worldwide Celebration. Now, there's not gonna be another banner for the anniversary. We're getting part three and the EX part, but those will just bring new events and new awakenings as opposed to new banners. So you don't really have to save for anything else for the anniversary. But uh, like I said, man, you got to save for the Worldwide Celebration because that's going to be um, absolutely insane. I'm sure the units will be absolutely crazy off the charts OP. So 
that's my recommendation guys that's how i feel about it um hopefully you guys are able to make your own decision based on all the information i gave you in this video but uh i would just skip this banner i really would of course you do have the option to use your rainbow tickets so if you really want to summon use those rainbow tickets see how it goes test your luck a little bit and uh you know if you don't get them then it's just not meant to be you know but i just don't think it's really worth your stones I just feel like the value here is way too low. I just think that while being very good, these units are not good enough, are not broken enough to justify not saving for the Worldwide Celebration. So uh, there you have it, guys. That is going to be today's video. Thank you so much for watching. We will end on the Kaken Goku animations here. And uh, let me know in the comments down below what you plan to do. Are you going to be summoning? Are you going to be skipping? And uh, if you do decide to summon, then let me know how many stones you're going to be spending. But otherwise, guys, that's all I got to say. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you liked today's video, then make sure to like the damn video. Sub to the channel if you're new. Hit that notification bell so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And uh, until next time. Have an awesome, awesome day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media. Signing out.